This game feels like going to Vegas without any of the good parts. Let's go gambling! Quick disclaimer, my cat could be heard various times throughout this video. I hope you guys don't mind and doesn't distract you. Huh? Anyways, continuing on. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Roguelike Spotlight. Ooh. The show where we take a roguelike, break it down to its key components, and see if it's worth your precious gaming time. Or if you might be better going outside and actually touching some grass. Oh. Today we're diving into Mega Loot. A game that traps you in an endless tower, fighting wave after wave of enemies, all the while you gamble at the shop and praying to the RNG gods for the right build to keep you going. Boiler alert, they aren't very generous. Anyways, let's get started. Let's talk about gameplay, which I'll start just by saying... I did not care for Mega Loot. What? I opened up Steam and saw it being advertised as a new inventory management roguelike game. And you know, I thought to myself, there's another really good inventory management roguelike game that I love a lot. So, you know, it was on sale, so I bought it. So I was super excited to play it. And after five hours, well, it felt more like a chore than playing a game. Like, everything works fine. Everything's clearly explained, though you do have to kind of go out of your way to figure out what each stat does. But for the most part, it's pretty clear. Except the game doesn't really tell you anything when you start. You kind of have to figure it out as you go it would be nice to have something to you know reference off of all they do is they pat your backs they get in there champ and um good luck make it to floor 60 i guess because that's the achievement for each character this approach isn't that bad at least to a lot of player autonomy but my big problem is while i was playing i felt like i was gambling the entire time like in the late game come floors 25 plus it's just re-roll shop Realize there's nothing useful, repeat until you get something useful, then reset the process. Do this over and over again and lose your sanity while you're at it, which is what the game's meant to be, sure, whatever. But you would think the game would just play itself while you just focus on your build and everything, but nope. You have to manually attack every time, leaving you clicking over your roll button five or six times or however many times you want, and then click the attack button for no apparent reason. That's it. That's the game. What? It's just so lackluster to me. Maybe I don't get it, but I made it to floor 52, which apparently is better than like 91% of all players. Playing the game for five hours, I would have played more, but I just literally don't want to play the game anymore. In my opinion, it wasn't very enjoyable given the experience and how I felt playing the game. Gotta give gameplay a 2.5 out of five. Lower than average, because honestly, at least for me, I was just randomly pushing buttons rather than actually playing a roguelike game. Gameplay out of the way, let's go on to visuals. With visuals, they don't strike me at all. It feels very generic, lacking any unique designs or flair that made it more memorable. While some monster designs and weapon designs were pretty interesting and honestly kind of cool, it wasn't enough to really make the game stand out. My biggest complaint is there's only one backdrop as you climb the tower. There's only one section and that is tower. That's it. It's frustrating to progress and climb higher to only be met with the same thing over and over again, making it seem extremely dull. And like at least section it out if you want people to progress to level 60, at least in my opinion. Give some visual, I guess for lack of better word, to give some eye candy for the player to actually be like ah yes i have progressed to this next section where these monsters appear but no it's all based off of this arbitrary floor level visuals i'm gonna give it a three out of five while there are some cool designs in the monsters and weapons the overall experience felt average and a little lackluster now onto audio you ever feel like you're stuck in a musical loop well, that's how i felt with the audio in this game the soundtrack left very much to be desired feeling like every song was the exact same song as you progressed for 50 floors going in three hours into the game because it's a endless game to be fair you can save and quit whenever you want i'm pretty sure there's a continue option so i assume you could just stop but if you're going in for the long haul you're gonna be sitting there for three three and a half hours trying to get to floor 60 and like i said every song feels the same oh shit here we go again and the runs are indefinitely long. There's no end. There's no boss. There's no big thing at the end to stop you and be like, congratulations, you did it. Do you want to go into endless mode? That would be a great idea. Actually add a boss with a little bit of like levels and like section it out. But I digress. There's technically different tracks in the game, but I honestly didn't know that until I looked up the soundtrack and saw that there was different tracks. Each track just feels the same. And I don't know, maybe I lost some brain cells pressing the reroll shot button. 
2.5 out of 5. It all felt the same and the sound effects are average at best. Now onto the roguelike aspects of the game. With replayability, the most important of all roguelike games. And, well, that's all the game is. Unfortunately, it's lacking compelling narrative or a feeling of progression that would draw players in. And I'm not saying roguelikes all need to become roguelites, you know? They don't all need to suddenly have all these massively long progression trees and each run unlock something new. But like, at least tell me while I'm here. A great game to reference is Crypt of the Necrodancer, which I guess technically has some roguelite aspects. But if we ignore the unlocking weapon section and just go based off of the story, as you find new characters, all their stories intertwine and tell a cohesive story, at least for the main ones. Which I'm not saying there's like 15 different characters. You don't have to make a story for all of them, but at least explain why you're here. All we know is you just, you're at this tower now. Figure it out. Good luck. That's it. Going back to replayability. It's lacking a compelling narrative. There's no end goal except for achievement hunting. Like I said, floor 60 appears to be like the end goal. And I only know that because I looked at the achievement list. While there are boss levels, they feel generic and lack any unique characteristics. They just literally feel like another fight. Like you can only tell because if you look at the top left corner, it's the final fight of each floor. But other than that, you can't you can't tell. It's just another fight. Though I will say the game is completely random, which can be fun. But without any captivating story or engaging gameplay, at least for me, it feels very underwhelming. So unless you really enjoy the gameplay or, or are passionate about achievement hunting, there isn't much to keep you engaged. I'd rate replayability, of, I'd give it a 5 out of 5 with an asterisk. Because the sheer amount of randomness, it's only replayability. Especially if you want to try different builds and hunt for achievements. But if that's not your cup of tea, you might not find it very replayable like me because of the lack of satisfying progression or like visual cues it just makes it feel not satisfying so personally, I give it a three out of five for replayability. Now let's talk about the difficulty level. Honestly, I find this section really hard to rate. In my experience, reaching floor five is relatively easy, but getting past floor 10 or 15, well, that could be quite tough. Once you get a solid build going, you can just mash the attack button and real world button like it's nothing and just progress through the game. However, if you don't establish a good build early on, you can die really easily. And that's due to the sheer amount of RNG involved with re-rolling the shop. Gambling! Like, that's all you could do to get items. I guess there's slight RNG whenever, right before the final boss wave of each floor, there's a chest and you can get loot there, but it's not helpful. You have to find yourself hoping for the right items to appear in the shop, which can make or break your run. On average, I'd give this a 3.5 out of 5. The game could be challenging, but once you get going, it becomes mashing the attack button until you realize you messed up. Also, to expand on this, it just feels like you're gambling each time you hit that reroll button. Like, you should hit that that subscribe button but at least you know what you're getting hit that subscribe button hit that like button get new roguelike content in your feed but after a solid five hours of playing filled with moments of confusion and maybe a little existential questioning i'm going to give mega loot a rating of three out of five or if you're really into the gameplay or achievement hunting maybe a more generous 3.5 out of five but in my experience it's average at best i would rather play games that feel more rewarding while playing at least it feels good to get to new areas and feel a sense of personal growth instead of feeling like i'm at the mercy of a randomized shop it doesn't feel like there's any skill expression i guess the skill would be how you build your character but there's no mechanical skills but my review aside is megaloot really worth your time i'd say unless you're really into the concept of auto battlers without the actual auto battling part and you enjoy hunting for achievements then mega loot might not be for you but hey that's just my two cents i've only played for five hours and there's a big chance maybe i'm missing something that others see in the joy of this game for me it's just not a game that hits the marks not something i would come back to but hey if you do like the game tell me in the comments about how i'm wrong or you know rather just point out the key parts and just explain why you enjoy the game because it's a game that's we're supposed to enjoy them but hey if you enjoyed this video check out this video on a very fun deck building roguelike named cobalt core it's a very fun and lighthearted space themed roguelike where you pick your ship and crew to get out of time loop